So with all the talk and all the rumors about the A7 IV, it's really hard to think about anything else. However, the Sony A7 III is still an amazing option. We're gonna go over the reasons why in this video. Give a general breakdown, we're gonna talk about why it's still an amazing camera in 2021. Then we're gonna compare all those features to the rumored A7 IV, the A7C, cause that's probably something else that you're looking at. So let's get into it. Jumping right into the thick of things, the a7 III is still has amazing image quality. I mean, up until the a7 S III came out last year, people were still creating amazing videos with this thing, and they still are. It has 4K up to 30 frames per second and 120 frames per second in full HD. And really, when you scale that up to 4K, on YouTube or on online or anything, you can't really tell the difference. It's still great image quality there. The other key thing that I don't think most people think about is that the 4K is downscaled from 6K image sensor downscale, so you're getting a lot more information and resolution into that image. This is something that is even better than the A7 III from that standpoint. It's something that you can only really top in a Sony camera in the new A1, which is price point completely out of here. Next up, the Sony A7 III is still exceptional in low light. The A7S series might be the queen, but the A7 III is no slouch. And when it came out, it blew almost everything else out of the water. You can really pump the ISO up to levels that you can't on any other camera outside of the A7S III and not have any noise in the image. This comes in really clutch for any run and gun type shooters that doesn't have external lighting at on demand when they need it. Anybody that's doing weddings, corporate events, regular entertainment events, anything like that, the low light flexibility that you get from this camera just comes in so clutch. The next thing to think about is that all these cameras are hybrid cameras. So even though a lot of people here on YouTube use it to shoot videos, it is still best in class as a photography camera, especially somebody that wants to do both video and photo. The 24 megapixel sensor might be older from a Sony standpoint, but it's still one of the best in class and gives you a little bit more flexibility if you do need to crop in over something like the 12 megapixel A7S series. And then the other key thing there is that it also still has amazing autofocus, animal eye autofocus if you have the firmware updated there, as well as great eye and face autofocus, depending on what mode that you're in there, whether it's gonna be video or photo there. The other major feature that a lot of people don't think about is the dual card slots. Now this comes in clutch for any type of client work, whether that is you're doing corporate interviews, corporate events, weddings, anything that you need to deliver to a client. The peace of mind that you have that you're running two memory cards that have both things, that redundancy comes in so clutch because every once in a while a memory card might fail. You always have an immediate backup and I think this is one of the most important things. So with all those main things, I think you know these are some of the main things that would make you still consider the A7 III, but at the time of this video being recorded, you're probably saying yes, all that sounds great Leo, but the A7 IV is supposed to be coming out soon, at least so we think. So let's just talk about the A7 III versus the rumored A7 IV coming up there for a second. According to the rumors that are out there, the A7 IV may have 4K 60, it may have 10 bit, some people are saying it might still have 8 bit in order to not kill off the A7S III, it may not have 4K 60, if it does have 10 bit, there's all these rumors out there, I think it will be an amazing camera, so it will have improved autofocus, I think it will have the improved codex, the improved menu system that is in the A7S III, um, I think it will have a bunch of those things. It may not have 4K 120, and it may not have some of the highest codecs. We're still gonna have to wait to see. But either which way, if you need a camera right now, one of the things that you have to consider is that regardless of what features are gonna be in the new A7 IV, that camera is going to be priced probably north of $2,000. I think it will probably end up being north of $2,500. The A7 III, when it came out, came out at about $2,000, which was an amazing price point, but I just think in this environment, we have a lot has changed in the four or five years since the camera has come out. So I think it'll probably be at $2,500 or maybe even a little bit more. 
So considering that price point is in another echelon, if you don't really need the 4K slow-mo frame rates, which most people don't, they need good 4K at 24 frames per second, the savings that you get at an A7 III might still be worth it even after the A7 IV comes out. So if you're looking at Sony full frame, the other main camera that you're looking at would probably be the A7C, which is basically an A7 III shrunk down into an APS-C body. And I think it's an amazing camera. With the flip screen, the color science is slightly improved according to some people. Everything else is the same, but that flip screen can be really clutch for people that need to film themselves. It also has the advantage of no longer having the 30 minute record limit, which can be really important, especially if you're doing streaming or really long interview takes or something like that that is something that can be really annoying in the a7 III is that 30 minute record limit however comparing the a7c to the a7c we do have some things that can be important depending on your situation the dual card slots as i mentioned is a must-have for anybody that is doing client work and then the additional size of the body does help to add a little bit more weight which feels better to hold in the hand if you're doing handheld shooting and also that extra size does give you a bunch of different buttons and wheels on the body which can be very important for using the Sony menu system and customizing your camera with all the extra buttons and stuff. This helps you stay out of the menu system and helps you use the camera a lot quicker, which can be an advantage. So if you're going to be behind the camera, I think the a7 III is still the better buy. So we already talked about all the different rumors there and how that stacks up to the a7 III, no matter what it actually ends up being there. I do think if you are willing to spend the extra money, you might want to wait a few weeks after seeing this video to see if the a7 IV is, comes out rather than pulling the trigger on the a7 III. I think you should wait until October to see if the camera is going to be announced. But if it's not announced in October, I think it's going to be until January before the a7 IV comes out. That's because of all the chip shortage and all that stuff that is going on. I think that's pu pushed back a lot of new cameras from coming out right now. So I think Sony is trying to get that camera out and decrease production on other cameras, but if they can't do it reasonably by October, I think they're just gonna wait until January until that clears up. Here's the other thing though. If you really need a camera right now, even if they announce a camera in October, you may not be able to get your hands on it. Last year when the a7 III came out, it came out in the middle of the summer. I didn't get mine until September and I think a very similar thing will probably end up happening with the a7 IV. Even if it gets released, you probably won't be able to get your hands on it for a very long time. It's going to be one of the hottest selling cameras regardless of chip shortage. Put the chip shortage on top of that, it's going to be hard to get one into your hands. So again, if you could make do with all the things that we're talking about on the a7 III, I think it is still an amazing buy and that's why I think it is still worth it there. Anyway, I won't ramble on anymore. If this video helped you out in any way, shape or form, please go ahead and drop it a like, hit the subscribe button and the notification button for more videos here. And I will catch you in the next video. Big up yourself. Peace. <music>